Okay, I should be live. Yes, please. Let me go on to the right page. Sorry for putting my forehead in your face there, guys. <laughs> All right, I'm just checking on my iPad, making sure everything is good. Um, it says they're having trouble playing this video. Do you have that on yours? Yeah. Um, it says it's having trouble playing the video on my iPad. Do you have that pop up or is it on? Oh, maybe now we're on. Can you guys hear me and see me? Let's see. Hi, everybody. I just want to make sure that everything is good. How's that? There may be a delay because I was... Um, I was setting up my iPad before, so there might be a delay. Okay. <laughs> Hi, guys. All right. Can you guys hear and see me? All right. I want to make sure I'm on the see me page this time, so I just want to make sure everything is running good before we go ahead and start. How are you guys doing today? Here, I'm just setting my iPad up here with comments, make sure I don't miss anything. All right, fantastic. I'm gonna check on my ice melt really quick while we're waiting for everybody to jump in. It's looking good. All right, how are you guys doing today? Hey, Evelyn. Hey, Carol. How are you guys doing? Ooh, Evelyn's in South Carolina. That's right, so exciting. All right. Fantastic. Does it sound okay? Look okay? All good? All right. Thought I'd go live from the See Me page today, but um, I should be shared onto uh, my personal page and into our Torch Team group too. So wherever you are watching from, welcome. All right. Hey, Leslie. How are you? Hi, Carrie. Fantastic. So we'll go ahead and get started here in just a second. Um, we are making some ornaments today, some Christmas ornaments, and uh, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of different ways to do these. Um, we are going to be doing them uh, in ice malt as well as in chocolate, so I'll show you the variations um, and how to get the different uh, shapes and sizes and decorations. You can decorate them lots of different ways, but um, let's see. I just grab these. Hang on. I left it on the table right across from me. I was glazing it, so I always move that away from my workstation. Here is one of our ornaments right here, so you can see. All right, so we have our ornament here, um, but I did a couple different variations of it to show you guys some different ways. So we also have, and the ice malt ones here can hang, so as you can see with this glittery ornament here. This one's also ice malt, but I do it a little bit different way. I don't know if you can see with the lights, but it is covered in glitter, which I really, really love. Gets, gives it a nice sparkle. Okay, let's put this back over here. And then we're also going to be talking about doing this in chocolate today as well. This one is one of my absolute favorites. I just think it's so pretty with the chocolate and kind of like the vintage gold uh, finish on it. Let's see if I can get the, I don't know if the lighting will adjust here, but I have my bow on it as well. And um, yeah, so these can be solid um, just as treats, and you could also turn these into cocoa bombs, hot cocoa bombs, um, and you could turn the ice malt ones into hot tea bombs. So I'm going to be showing you guys all of that today. All right, set that guy over there. Let me just check on my comments here. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Okay, good. It looks and sounds okay. Hey, Taisha. Hey, Jesse Ann. All right, fantastic. So I'm gonna just pop my ice malt. Um, it's been preheating in the microwave, but I'm gonna put it in for another 30 seconds. So we're using, of course, Simi ice malt today. This is our pre-cooked ice malt. Um, so all you have to do is melt it 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals in the microwave until it is a liquid. So no temperatures or recipes or anything. Just melt it down and then go. Um, so we are today using our uh, limited edition shimmer red, our red shimmer, which is so pretty. It's kind of hard to see in the tiles themselves, but when we melt this, you're gonna 
to see just how pretty this color is. Um, this is a limited time color uh, just for the holidays, so um, this is included in the accessory kit if you got the accessory kit for this project, which, which is still available on my website, but you can get this individually too, and I really, really love it. It's this beautiful, bright Christmas red, but it has this really pretty metallic, um, shimmery finish to it too. So I'll show you guys that once it is all melted, which I believe it is. So like I said, I popped it in my microwave for 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals. I'm going to give it another 20 seconds or so just to make sure that it's all nice and melted. You want to bring it to a boil so that it gets nice and evenly heated. So when it starts bubbling, uh, that's how you know that it is done and I am ready to work with it. Um, Alright, so I'm going to tilt my camera down. Um, like I said, I'm going to be showing you guys this in different ways. So we're going to talk about it in chocolate, I'm going to show you how to do it in isomalt, um, but I'm actually going to show you two different ways. So today, uh, I'm really, really excited to be showing you guys how to make these casts, so if you want to pour them using the mold that we have, but I'm also going to show you my air casting technique. So this is an original technique that I came up with um, for basically uh, blowing isomalt into molds to get the impression of the piece. So um, I'm going to be using my dollop mold today, which is one of our newer molds. So I had started doing this technique um, in about, it was a little bit before the pandemic started, um, before the quarantine started, um, my air casting classes. You may have seen the um, classes of the um, glassworks cake and the hanging toppers and things like that. Um, and this is one of the molds that goes along with that. This is our dollop. And like I said, you can pour into it if you want. It's a two-part mold, but you can also take your blown ice melt pieces and actually blow right into the molds too, which I'm really excited to share that with you guys. So um, we are going to go ahead and tilt the camera down. So I'm just going to tilt you guys down to see my workstation here to make sure everything is nice and straight. All right. Okay, so um, I'm going to be uh, demoing, like I said, in different ways. So if you are going to be following along today, you're welcome to follow along with any of the techniques. Um, on the uh, supply list that came with the accessory kit or that went along with this project um, is mostly for the poured pieces. So for casting and pouring them in for the glitter covered ornament and then on the bottom, I wrote just uh, it's optional if you want to do a chocolate version which with whatever kind of um, hot cocoa and uh, marshmallows and things that you would like for yours. Um, but you can use a tempered chocolate, you can use an untempered chocolate, and if you want to try the air casting technique, if you have a blown sugar pump, um, I'm going to be using my pump as well. So if you want to get that out, um, I am going to be using that as well. Just um, for reference, if you are going to be following along today, that'll be super duper fun, or if you're watching the replay and are following along with that. Okay, I'm just refreshing my comments, making sure, for some reason they disappear now if I don't touch the screen every once in a while, so I'm just going back and looking at it. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments, and I will be happy to answer them. Mom's also um, keeping an eye on them, so if I miss anything while I'm working, please, please feel free to uh, go ahead and write into the comments. All right, so um, what we are going to do first here, I'll actually show you the red shimmer. So this is our beautiful red shimmer. You see all of that pearlescent finish. It's a very metallic, uh, almost opaque color, and I really love just how pretty that is. And you'll see that it, um, even more as we start making pieces with it. But it's just a really, really pretty shimmery red. And so, um, again, that is a limited edition color, but of course you can use any color that you like for this uh, project. If you want it more Christmassy, if you want it more wintry, you can kind of, um, you know, gear it towards what's going to work best for you. All right, so we are going to do a slightly different shape for the poured ornament. So we're going to start out by pouring ice melt into the molds. Like I said, you can pour these just like normal, but you can also use them for the air casting. So for pouring, um, what we're going to do is I just secured my mold with a rubber band. So I double wrapped the rubber band and made sure everything was even. This one that I'm going to do is a little different because I wanted to show you guys options. So it's not the one that came in the accessory kit, but this is our ridge sphere, our small ridge sphere, and it makes a really, really cute ornament. So I'm going to put the two halves together double wrap this rubber band. All right. And then I am just going to basically fill in the ice malt. So I just made sure it's all nice and lined up. And I'm going to pour the ice malt all the way in, making sure my rubber bands are evenly spaced. Okay, pouring the ice malt in all the way to the top. And I like to fill it all the way to the top first, even if I'm going to make this hollow. So you could potentially just leave this just like this and let it cool if you wanted a solid ornament. That way you can torch away any little bubbles on the surface. It would give you a beautiful, realistic, either glassy or metallic look if it was solid. But if you want it hollow, um, you will want to drain it out. So what I'm going to do is just drain out the excess ice melt into the bowl. Victoria said for frozen. <laughs> 
Oh, am I frozen, guys? Or frozen the movie. I'm not sure which. <laughs> Let me know. Let me know how it looks. All right. So I'm just letting the excess drain out while I wait and make sure that I'm not frozen. I can go over that again if I need to. You're working on my end. Okay, good. I was a look to you guys. Is everything working okay? All right, so I'm just letting all the excess drain out. It's really important to let, let the excess drain. Okay, Evelyn says it looks good. Victoria said it looks good. Okay, awesome. It just may have been a little connection error. All right, so it's really important just to let all of the excess drain out of the mold. So I'm just letting it all pour out. If you don't let all the excess drain out and then you flip it over and let it cool, um, any excess that didn't get to drain out will pool at the bottom of the mold, and then you're going to have a dark spot across the top. So um, with this little one, you can either fill it once or twice uh, because it's so small. So if you're going to make like a hot tea bomb that you want it to dissolve, you may want to experiment with just doing one fill because then it will dissolve into water faster. But for this one, I'm going to do two just because this is more of a display. So I filled it directly up one more time. I did not let it cool or anything like that. Um, you don't have to let it cool in between coats because the silicone of the mold is so cool compared to the ice melt when you first pour it in. It's already hard in the outside surface, so I don't need to let it sit or anything before I drain it back out. And now I'm just letting all the excess drain into that pretty shimmery color. And this is, like I said, a small ridge sphere. So it's not actually an ornament um, by, you know, nature, like necessarily. You can use this for other things because it's just a sphere. We're going to add on the cap and the hook to make it look like that sphere or that ornament. But it, since it is a sphere, you can use it for other things. I love to use this for pumpkins during the fall. Um, I think it would be a really cute beach ball for the summer because it has those lines in the sides of it. Um, or even just for an abstract decoration. You know, those spheres that are on cakes right now in chocolate and in ice vault are so popular. So even just having it as... Um, a smooth, simple, you know, uh, decoration piece for a more abstract design, I think would be really pretty. All right, so just letting all that excess drain out, practicing my patient skills. And then we'll just scrape the excess and let that cool. So because it is surrounded by so much silicone in there, it is going to take a little while for that to cool. I have a little bubble on the surface that closed over, so I'm just zapping that with the torch. Um, I don't worry about all that excess because we can clean that up afterwards, but we'll let this sit at room temperature for probably about 20 minutes or so for this size, but it depends on the temperature of your room and how um, hot your ice melt was and how thick of a layer you did. Obviously, if it's solid, it's going to take longer, so I would leave it for a good like 30 to 45 minutes if it's solid, but hollow is not going to take quite as long because the air can get down in there to cool it. So we'll just put that guy right off to the side. All right, so that's pouring. Um, so with pouring, it is going to be super simple, super easy. It would be that, that exact same process if I wanted to do that in chocolate. So I have the chocolate one here. I'll hold up. Maybe you can see a little bit better with the lighting. Yeah. Okay, so you can make these solid or hollow with the chocolate as well. Just make sure to tap it, get all of the air bubbles out as you're filling it, and then freeze. Uh, you don't want to freeze the ice melt because you don't want the moisture to affect it, but you do want to freeze the chocolate if you're doing this in a chocolate version. And then, again, I added the cap and the bow on top afterwards, which I'm going to show you in a second. So um, make sure that you, uh, if you want to do that in chocolate, you can do it hollow if you want to turn it into a cocoa bomb. This is a perfect size for a really, really pretty, elegant cocoa bomb. You could go back and paint these. You can go back and add glitter like I did for my other one um, just by painting it with piping gel and rolling it in the glitter. Uh, you could really do anything with this. You can pipe over them. So if you wanted to pipe royal icing or chocolate over these, um, you definitely can. And um, the hole at the top of the mold is where I put the cap. So it pretty much acts as a seal if, if you're either doing the hot tea bombs or the hot chocolate bombs. And it just locks everything in there. So if you want to fill it with your um, hot chocolate mix, if you want to use your little mini marshmallows or any little surprises inside, it just makes it really really easy all right so I'm gonna pop my red back into the microwave because it got a little bit too thick so I'll pop it in for another 30 seconds or so And next, I'm going to be making my decoration for the ornament itself. So I'm going to pour into my mold. Now, you can use another color of ice melt if you'd like. Just to keep this easy, um, I just stuck with all one color, and then we'll paint it with some of our base white paint afterwards from the Simi Color Splash. But if you have another color of ice melt that you would like to use instead, you can pour the um, ice melt right, heat it up and pour the ice melt into here. But just for time's sake, I'm just going to use that red again. Uh, let's see, I saw a question here. I know you said you don't freeze ice melt, but what about placing it, the finished 
piece in a cake in the fridge. So I try not to put any ice melt in the fridge or freezer, even if it's on the cake, because the moisture and the condensation will affect it when you take it out especially, um, and especially if you're in a warmer or a more humid climate like I am in Florida. It may be a little bit different depending on your fridge's humidity um, and your um, climate's humidity, so you can do um, you know a little test and see how it's going to react, but I usually don't recommend it, even if the piece is sprayed with glaze. Um, so put the ice melt pieces on after it comes out of the fridge before it's going to be picked up or delivered. That's always what I would recommend. All right. Okay, so I'm going to take my ice melt, so I just brought it back to a nice liquid, and we're going to pour that right into our bow decoration. I think I'm going to use this smaller one for this guy. All right, so I like that it's a little bit more compact. It's not quite as long as this bigger bow that I usually use, and that will look really cute with the roundness of our ornament. So I'm just using a silicone tool to spread that in, not worrying about the edges if they get a little bit messy or rough because I can just clean those up and smooth those up with the torch. So I'm just making sure the whole cavity is filled and then that will not take very long at all for it to cool. It'll probably take about five minutes at room temperature. So I'll just put that guy right off to the side and you can see that beautiful, brilliant, kind of shiny red that we're gonna get out of it. Okay, all right. Hey Patricia, how are you? All right, so while those are cooling, I want to show you guys the air casting technique. So the air casting technique, like I said, um, is one of my techniques that I came up with. It's based on blown glass. So with blown glass, um, if you've seen, um, you know, uh, glass workers, you know, making gl blown glass pieces, if you've seen glass artists, um, you know, on TV and things, um, a lot of times they have these forms and these molds that they'll actually blow into. Um, and I've worked a little bit, you know, in glass and kind of seen the correlation between the two. They're really not that different. And of course, ice mold isn't quite that hot, but you can do a lot of the same things with it, and they have some really, really innovative techniques. So I wanted to show you guys that with my air casting mold here with the dollop, because the dollop is one of my absolute favorites. So we are going to start off by pulling our ice mold, but I have that ready off to the side. I just put one rubber band around it, and I just did it wrapped once, because you want it enough to hold it together, but you don't want it so tight that you can't open it and close it easily to get the piece in and out of the mold. So I'm just going to put that off to the side for now. And I'm going to pour it out onto the mat. So we're going to go ahead and pour a little bit of ice malt right out into the center. So you'll really get to see that beautiful shimmer. And we probably won't use quite all of this, but we do want some for the cap afterwards. So I'll pour a pretty good amount. Um, if you're using the six ounce bag that you got in the accessory kit, you'll probably want at least half of that poured out onto the mat. Okay, I'm not working with a heat lamp today, but you can if you want to make it a little bit easier to be able to go a little slower, not have to do it all at once. You can put it under the lamp. I use a 250 watt bulb, and I have a YouTube video on how I um, design my stand for it and how far away I put it to the table and all that info. All right, but I'm just going to keep folding and folding and folding in the edges. So I'm lining up the edges of the puddle as I fold, folding it directly in half, but I am alternating which ways I'm folding to keep it nice and consistent. All right. And now you can see that it's really starting to pull away at the edges. I am going to also start to move it over every few folds because I don't want the table to insulate too much heat. You'll see that I am working on a double mat and that is super um, uh, helpful for insulation because it just keeps the uh, metal from the table from getting it too hot. The silicone has pores, so from too much heat it can actually open up the pores and the ice melt can get stuck down in them. So I like to keep it as cool as possible underneath. So I like that double mat. And I'm just going to keep continuing to fold until it all comes up and off. Alright. And so we're just fold, fold, fold until it is not sticky anymore. So the key with the air casting technique is not to use too much because you want it to grow into the shape and size of the mold. So if it's too big to start with, you're not gonna have anywhere to go to um, to actually take the impression. So I don't wanna use too much. Of course, you do want enough that you'll have a strong enough layer as it gets thinner and thinner as you blow it bigger. But that's just going to take practice. This is one of those techniques where you just remelt it and try it again until you get that perfect combination of texture, of amount, of how much to blow it into the mold. 
it really just does take practice and luckily that's the best part of ice melt is that you can remelt it so there's no waste there's no harm in just popping it back in the bowl and trying again all right so i'm going to cut a piece off probably about half of what i have here okay i have my simi sugar pump here that i'm going to be using i do have a youtube video on how i season the end of it to get it a little bit sticky so if you're interested in that if you have a fresh pump i do like to have that little bit of ice melt there on the end and that texture to help it stick on so you see I just heated that up okay I'm just going to pinch around the base so all this is just going to be like our basic bubble start um, I do have a uh, bubble basics video on my YouTube channel as well so if you are newer to blow ice melt you may want to check that out this is kind of a crash course but that goes really in depth all right so I put it about a third of the way into the ball. I'm, I'm going to start the air before we put it into the mold to make sure everything's inflating evenly so I'm going to give it one pump as hard as I can and it's not really going to look like too much is happening at first but as the pressure starts to build up we're going to start to see it get bigger okay if i have any hot spots you may notice that one side or spot is getting bigger or that is getting a little bit thinner i'll press them into a cool spot on my uh, mat or on my table to help cool them off so that that hot spot doesn't continue to expand since anywhere it's hotter it is softer and I'm going to get it just slightly smaller than the size of the mold. So that's where I um, kind of recommend that practice because you don't know how big to make it until, you know, you make it too big or you make it too small. It's really just a learn through doing kind of practice. Okay, once I have just the basic bubble started, it's looking pretty even around the outside. I'm going to go ahead and place it in the mold. And then I don't want to press down with it. I don't want to touch it to the sides. I'm suspending it right in the middle of the uh, cavity of the mold. I can kind of feel that I'm not pressing down into any of the sides. And I'm just going to hold the mold with one hand to make sure it doesn't come apart. And I'm slowly going to inflate. Okay, um, it's going to inflate down. It's going to inflate to the sides. And once the whole cavity of the mold is filled, the air is going to have nowhere else to go but up through the stem okay so you see where the pipe is sticking out here so that's how I know it's done so I'm just giving the air time after each pump I'm not just pump 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 pumping away I'm doing one pump waiting five or ten seconds then doing another because it takes a second for the pressure to build in ice melt stretches very slowly so you don't want to do too much pressure okay now that I see that the air is starting to go up into the stem you see that tiny little bubble making its way higher and higher I know that it's pressed down as much as it can, it's expanded outwards as much as it can, so now it's trying to press up. So I'm going to pull on it a little bit up towards me or towards the camera. I'm pulling upwards just to stretch out the stem, give me a good spot to cut, and then adding a little bit more air. So I'm holding with my other hand really firmly on the outside of the mold, using opposing force here to make sure that that stays in. And that's just going to um, make sure I don't get seams around the outside edge, because we do want the mold flexible enough to pull apart and put back together really easily to get the bubble in and out. But we don't want it to come apart when we're actually trying to get the shape. All right, so now I can feel, um, I've seen that the bubble has gotten a lot higher. It's almost to the lip of the mold, even if it were to pop there, if you had a lot of excess pressure and it ended up getting a little pop in the neck, it really doesn't matter because it's going to be the bottom. We're going to cut that off and put the cap there anyway. So I'm just going to let this cool for a little bit. I don't let it cool all the way down because um, when things are cold, they tend to be more fragile, but when things are warm, they have a little bit of give to them. So it's going to be easier and safer to unmold it when it's still slightly warm, but we do want it cool and solid enough to hold its shape okay so this is where we're going to use those patient skills and just let it cool for a minute or so so I basically am holding the mold still but I'm jiggling the pipe a little bit and seeing if I can bend it so if this pipe bends really easily then I know it's still pretty warm and pliable but once it starts feeling a little bit more solid then I will um, start to take it out so we'll wait another second or two all right so we're just being patient, letting it cool into the shape. We want to make sure it doesn't um, start collapsing or misshape if we take it out when it's still too warm and soft. So I really, really want to use those patient skills. Um, but you can do this in any of our two-part molds, um, basically, because they all are going to have that nice stem at the top. And, um, you know, as long as you can get the pipe in there, if it's a big enough piece, you can do it. So like we have all our sphere molds. Again, they work really beautifully with pouring crystal clear um, isomalt orbs or chocolate spheres. But you can make perfect bubbles 
every time with this technique as well. So if you want to, um, of course, you guys have probably seen me making bubbles where I just, you know, shape it and blow it by hand, but you can also blow right into the sphere, and that's going to ensure that it's exactly even, that the sides, you know, every single side is going to be even, it's the same size. Uh, it adds a lot more consistency, so you can know that each, ev each and every bubble that you make is going to be um, consistent, and they're all going to be the same size. All right. Okay, so I'm feeling that there's still a little bit of give when I bend the pipe, but really not that much. So this is the moment of truth. We're going to remove that rubber band first. We can set the whole thing on its side now because it is solid enough. And then we're just going to unmold it like anything else, just little bits, letting the air get in. And there we go. Look how beautiful that is. And because we blew this into the mold, rather than pouring it, we get that beautiful smooth surface and that shine that blown and pulled ice malt have. You know how they have that satin finish from all the air being pulled into it? That translates right into this finished piece. So I'm just carefully jiggling it out of the other side. And look how pretty that is. I really, really love this mold. I think that it's just so showy. Right? Yeah, because it makes wonderful lemons also. Yes, I love the lemon. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And it makes them really thin, too. So if you wanted to make something like that trend that was going around for a while, um, where they were breaking the lemon and they were putting stuff inside of it, this gives you a really, really thin, delicate um, thickness, too, that would be easy to break. So if you wanted to put sprinkles or something in this and then put one on top of ice cream or gelato and break it, that would be super duper cool, too. All right, so if this is still a little bit warm, because like I said, I unmold it while it is still slightly warm, I like to rotate this in front of the fan for a second just to ensure that when I'm handling it, it's not going to dent or anything like that. And then we are going to heat that stem that I made where that little bubble was starting to press out and cut it off right there, and that is where our cap will be. Isn't that neat? And I just, I really love this shimmery red for this technique because I feel like it lends itself so well to that Christmas ornament look. But it's also going to be really pretty in, I mean, really any color. Blues would be so pretty. Um, even just making more like, you know, normal times of the year ornaments. Um, you know, you could do them in hot pink or a green. It'd just be really, really nice. Patricia says it's going to take a lot of practice. It definitely does. Like I said, this is one of those techniques where you have to do it a whole bunch of times to get that perfect combination of texture, of size, of how fast you're blowing it so you don't get a blowout, um, and things like that. But once you do it a bunch of times, it really, really is just going to give you those beautiful, consistent shapes that just, it's so unique. It doesn't look like anything else. Even when you pour it, it's going to look different, which I'll show you with the other one once that comes out. All right, and now we just cut it off like a normal bubble. So that little bubble um, at the stem here that um, we left, I'm just going to heat up. It's really thin, so it'll probably start falling off before you even cut it, which will just aid you. So you can see it's just popping through right there. Ah! And then we'll cut that excess off. Okay, and then that little bit, use your gloved hands to just kind of fold it in, or you can go back and heat it up a little bit and then use your mat to kind of flatten it. And I just kind of tuck it in. Again, use your gloved hands, not your regular hands. Very bad example of me. Okay, so just tuck that in a little bit. So that leaves that hole to go right inside. So you can use a little funnel and you can pour it in to um, pour anything into it that you want. So if you want to do a tea bomb, if you want to add in uh, glitter or sprinkles, you can add things into the center before you put the cap on. Jackie's granddaughter Maddie is saying hi. Hi Maddie, how are you? All right. All right, so you can see to clean up the end of the pipe, I'm just going to heat that up and then cut the excess off, and then I would be ready for another bubble. So again, practice is the key with this. Just keep remelting, keep redoing. You can see all that excess is just going right into the bowl, and you can melt it back down. Right, so we have our little ornament right now. I'm going to put that off to the side and we're going to make our cap for it. So um, the ice melt that I have here, if it was a little bit warmer than this, I could re just um, animate it in the microwave for five seconds, but it's gotten pretty hard. So I'm just going to go ahead and melt this back down and in the microwave. And then we will just pull a tiny bit more. Might be a little too long. Let's just do 30 seconds. Um, so yeah, that comes out really, really pretty. Um, I can probably unmold the poured one as well if you guys want to see the difference. So I'm just going to flex the mold 
and it's going to come out. So the only difference with this, you're not going to have that shine that you have with pulled ice malt that has that satin finish, and you may have a couple little bubbles on the surface. I mean, you can see it's not a huge difference, so whether you are wanting to learn the blown techniques or you just want to make it super easy on yourself and pour them, they're both going to look really, really pretty, but it just does have a slightly different texture um, to each other. Wow. Yeah, I love these, and they're just so easy, especially if you do it that poured way. Um, and I actually think the bubbles come in uh, handy in a lot of ways because I have this other picture I was going to pop up and show you guys of a clear one that I did. Even though it is hollow, so I can't um, take away the bubbles, I actually think that the bubbles really add to it for this one. So I actually filled it with some sprinkles, um, and then you can see I kind of had it like open up, like it's spilling out everywhere because I just thought it would be kind of a pretty, like, you know, alternate way to do it. So, um, yeah, it's just how you can really kind of tweak this and change this to be whatever you want it. And like I said, different colors are going to give you really different um, pretty effects as well. So if you wanted to even go back and paint these afterwards, you can. You can use the Simi Color Splash colors. You can use the um, uh, airbrush color, you know, regular airbrush colors. You can use powdered colors. Anything sticky will stick. So you can really customize these to whatever you want or even just do the smooth ones like I was talking about and then go back and pipe over them or paint over them too. And Maddie says she's fine and she's learning to write. I think she's doing great. Yeah, you're doing an awesome job. Thanks for watching. All right. So see how I just melted that back down a little bit. I'm just going to wait for those bubbles to settle before we pour a little bit more to make the cap. Like I said, you can do this whatever color you like. I'm going to be making it in the, um, the red shimmer, and then I'm going to be painting it with our base white after that. So Laura had a question. This is mm -hmm. a good one. I'm assuming it's the picture you just showed. Yeah. Was that the clear sparkle, or was it just the bubbles giving it that effect? It was just the bubbles. So that was crystal clear ice melt. Um, it would look even more glittery and sparkly if yeah. you used the That's clear so glitter. Cool. I love that idea. Um, but you, it, that was just the clear. And you can see it really does give it that glittery, almost like a disco ball sort of look, um, which I think is really pretty. So the bubbles really aren't a hindrance here. Um, I think that they add to the finished look. And it's just because silicone breathes, right? Exactly, yeah. Silicone breathes. It's natural. Um, different silicones do it to different extents, so different kinds of silicone may be more bubbly or less bubbly, depending on the mold, but uh, you will have a little bit of a bubbly surface. And like I said, if you wanted it to be totally smooth, you can do these solid uh, if they're just going to be for decorations. They are a little bit heavier, but these pieces aren't giant, so they wouldn't be crazy, crazy heavy if they were poured solid. Alright, so I'm just pulling a little bit more, just like I did before, and we're going to make our cap to go on top, and our little bow should be cool as well. Alright, and depending how hot this is to start with, it will affect how long this pulling process takes. You can see I didn't heat this quite as much as it was in the first time, plus I'm doing less, so it's really not taking very long to all come together into a clay. Beautiful. Okay, so once this is a clay, it really can just be sculpted like anything else, like modeling chocolate, like gum paste. Um, usually if I'm going to be doing a lot of sculpting on it, I would use a heat lamp to keep everything warm, but we're just doing a little bit here, so I won't need that much time. Okay, so once it releases, I'm going to stretch and fold, which really, really shows off how pretty and reflective that satiny finishes of that red shimmer. All right. And we're just going to cut off a little piece first, a little ball. Oh, probably you about. The the... Yes, yeah, so how I did with this with the chocolate version is, um, because obviously chocolate's liquid, so um, I'm not going to, you know, cut a piece off or anything, it's liquid. Um, you can pipe something to stick on top if you wanted something 2D, but um, for something 3D, I did it out of modeling chocolate. So I just, it still is going to have that chocolatey flavor, but you have more leeway to be able to shape it, and um, I don't think I would, you probably could hang the chocolate ones, but modeling chocolate's not quite as strong as the, um, the isomalt, so if you really, really wanted to hang a chocolate ornament, I would make the topper just out of gum paste uh, or out of uh, even isomalt and attach it to the chocolate one using liquid chocolate, and that would help it to be a lot stronger. So I'm just going to flatten on both sides and just give it that flat top that a cap has. Okay, they're usually not really rounded, they're more flat like a bottle cap. And I just want to make it big enough that it's going to cover the whole. So that should be good. 
I don't like to put it on too soon. I like to just let it cool for a second. So you see I'm just letting it cool and rolling it and continuing to maintain the shape to make sure that it's going to hold its shape once I put it on and not accidentally dent it or get uneven really quickly. All right. Perfect. While that's cooling, this is still a little bit warm, so I'm going to cut a little bit off into a tube here. So you see how I just cut a piece and it already elongated itself? I'm then going to stretch and pull that just into a little candy cane shape for the hook at the top. All right. And we'll let that cool before we attach it on with a torch. Ah! Or we'll drop it. <laughs> Let's make another one really quick. Oops. Oops! Ice Melt likes to jump, doesn't it? This one will be even better. It's okay. There we go. Okay, so we have our little candy cane shape. Put that off to the side before I drop it. And this should be cool enough. I like to put it on when it's a little bit warm so it does contour to the piece, but not too warm that I accidentally could squish it really easily. Hey, don't hold things and torch them, so you see how I'm putting the ornament down. Uh, again, this would be the time that you could fill it, so if you wanted to fold up a tea bag and put it inside, or do some loose leaf tea to turn this into a hot tea bomb, that would be super duper cute. Or you could do an apple cider bomb if tea's not your thing. They have those new tea drops. Yeah. Shapes of tea. And then, yeah, then once they go in the water, they break up. That would be super cool. They're so cute. All right, and if I wanted to make that hole bigger, I could just using a hot knife. Okay, so see how I just attach that right onto the top. And then we're just going to torch and stick our little candy cane on. Don't hold things and torch them. That was a very bad example of me. <laughs> but I just use the torch to stick that right on there. I even really like it in the red. I think that, that just the solid one color is really pretty. Okay. And so we'll just use the fan to cool that down. And then this little excess piece here, remember, just goes right back into our bowl and it will be remelted. Okay. I do want to just make sure that this is not going to warp or fall on me before I set it down. And then we will unmold our bow here in a second. All right, so just cooling, cooling, cooling that down. And like I said, you could decorate these in different ways. So the bow mold that I'm using is, of course, one of our bow molds, but you can use any bow mold that you want. You could even do a pulled ice mold bow on it if you wanted to, or you can mix mediums, make something out of fondant, make something out of gum paste or rondeling chocolate and put that on there if you want to. Some really pretty ribbons would be nice. Um, what I did for the super sparkly one is I just painted the outsides in piping gel and then just um, sprinkled the uh, edible glitter on. So I used diamond dust from the Sugar Art. It's an edible glitter and it's really, really pretty. So I just added that onto the outside um, by just painting it in piping gel first and it sticks on really, really pretty. So you could do that if you want to. All right. And between that and the bubbles on it, on the outside, it just really adds to that glittery effect. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to leave this kind of propped up here so that it stays upright as it cools just in using half the mold while we get our little bow ready. Okay, so my bow should be cool when I take it out. I do have a couple little rough edges on it, so I want to make sure, like you can see on the edges here, that there, it's a little rough. So I'm going to put this piece face down on the mat to protect the detail on the front, and I'm just going to lightly torch around the edges. So I'm torching from the back of it and just letting those pieces smooth over. And ice melt should naturally just melt and smooth into itself as you torch, but if you um, need to help it on along a little bit after I torch around it like I just did, I'll wait about 5 or 10 seconds. So right about now I could go in with my scissors and I could just trim off any excess while it's still warm and pliable. Okay, but you'll see once that's cool, you can pick it up and you have a beautiful smooth bow. Alright, and then when we go to attach it onto the outside, let's pick our front here. You could use a little bit of liquid ice melt. I'm just going to torch slightly on the cap, but um, usually you want to be careful because you don't want to accidentally torch the blown ornament part. But if I turn my torch way down, that should be okay. Right onto there. And look how pretty that is. So again, you can mix and match different colors with this if you want to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and paint my bow white right now. You could paint the cap if you want to. You can paint the actual ridges. So if you wanted to make this like a really pretty, what do they call those, starlight mints, you could go back with the white and paint like every other oh, ridge. I, love that. I feel like that would be super duper pretty. Even with pearl dust. So I'm going to use my color splash colors, but you can even go in with some luster dust mixed with alcohol or petal dust mixed with alcohol and use that instead. 
but I'll go ahead and grab my palette here. All right, so I'm using Base White. These are our Simi Color Splash colors, so they are a water-based color that is super, super duper pigmented and is going to give us a really, really bright, intense color. They can be mixed into the ice malt, but they can also be painted on top, which is what I'm going to do with the Base White. Now, the Base White is opaque and almost more of a like thin acrylic paint consistency, whereas all the other colors are transparent. So this Base White is going to give us a really, really solid finish. Look at that. That's only one coat. Now, ice malt can sometimes beat up if you use too much paint all at once, so occasionally I'll go back after this dries and give it another coat of paint just to make sure it's a nice, solid cover. Just because ice malt is not porous like fondant and gum paste is, so it doesn't grab the paint as much all at once. Okay. On my other ornament that I have that I'll show you guys again, I did the bow gold and I did the cap white, but I thought I'd mix it up since we already have one of those and do something a little bit different for you guys. Right, and you can mix this base white into any of the colors that are transparent to turn them opaque. So if you wanted to paint on top of this with, let's say, um, like a yellow, of course a clear yellow is not really going to show up onto a bright red, but if you mix the base white in with it, it will make it show up and make it opaque. Okay. Alright, see how pretty that is? And that, again, is just one coat, and it's super, super vibrant. We actually have a painting demo coming up, which I'm so excited about, um, here on the Simi Cakes page. It's going to be this Tuesday by Mariana Beltran. I have a sh uh, picture to show you guys in a minute. But she's going to be using the Color Splash colors to do some of her incredible hand painting, which I'm really, really excited about. Okay, but you can see how pretty that white is. And then you can go back again and customize it however you like. After this is all cool, you do want to make sure that you spray this with the Clear Edible Glaze Spray. So the Clear Edible Glaze Spray is going to lock out moisture and humidity and make sure it stays nice and shiny. It won't get sticky or cloudy or anything like that. And it just really makes sure that it's going to lock out any moisture or humidity in the air. All right. Now, um, one more thing that I wanted to show you guys with the ornaments is with the uh, poured one, you see how it did have that little base on it? You can leave that if you want to or you can cut it off. So I'm just going to grab my bowl. And I'll show you guys how I cut that off. It's pretty much the same thing as what I did on the blown one. Okay, you want to wear your gloves for this. But I'm just going to torch it all the way around. Give that a few seconds for the heat to sink in. And then I'll just cut it off and it should just pop right off. Now, for this one, you can put the cap there if you wanted to, okay? Um, but it's going to be round on the bottom. So a lot of times what I would do is I would heat up my red, pour out just a little, a little puddle, a little disc, okay? That's going to be the so size to cover that. And then once it's cool, I torch the disc and set that into it. And that way you have a flat base so that it's not going to roll around on you. But again, that's personal preference. It depends if you're going to be hanging it and you want that perfectly round bottoms in case you see up and underneath it. And so you want to put the cap over the top like I did with the dollop or if you want a flat base more for like a t-bomb that's going to be standing on its own or you can even put lights inside of this so i use like the little tea lights or the little balloon lights the leds you could put that inside of it and make it glow make it change colors if you do a clear or a white one um, the possibilities are really really endless i have one over here that i made in green that i really like and so you guys can see a finished version of one. So that one um, does have the hole on the bottom so that I could put the light inside of it or so that it sits flat. And having it um, hollow really just gives it that lightweight finish. So if I wanted to hang it, I could, um, but it even just uses less product. This one is poured, so you can see it does have a slight texture on it, but it, I think it just gives it sparkle. And I did use, um, it's hard to tell with the cameras here because they're not as crisp as my uh, photo cameras, but I did use our clear glitter, and I just added green airbrush color. I added green color splash into it um, to use our new clear glitter color to just bump up the really, really sparkliness of it. And then used our um, Katie Sue Bow Mold, and then added a little bit, I did a fondant top on this one just for ease because I had some fondant out, and painted it. But again, you can mi mix and match uh, medium for whatever you want to do. But I just think that that comes out so, so pretty for a little round ornament. And we have the different sizes of these as well. I believe the ridged, we have this one and we have the large one, um, which is going to be a lot bigger, uh, more like a life-size ornament. Uh, and then the smooth, we have a small, medium, and a large one. All right, so I'll show you guys the difference, too, in that one that I made before compared to the one I just did, just so you can see kind of like color differences. I like both of them. I think they're both pretty, but again, even a really pretty green would look nice like I did with the other one. You could do them in gold, do them in pearl would be so pretty. So, Jessie Ann wants to know, is there a light that comes with a remote? 
I think you can probably get, um, we have little tea lights, like the candle ones that have a remote. I do, yeah, you put them in the candles. Yeah, like the one, I, I'm sure you can get them on Amazon, or um, Michael's usually has them this time of year, too, uh, the little, like, candles and tea lights. I think we got ours as a set, so it came with tea lights, the fake candles, and they all relate to one remote, um, but you can probably get individualized ones, I'm sure, online somewhere. If not, it's a good thing to invent. It really is. <laughs> Awesome. So yeah, and then we have our chocolate version as well. So if you wanted to fill that with your hot cocoa and drop that right into the mug, you have that. Um, or you can do them solid just as treats. Or put a filling inside of them. This would be a really, really pretty bonbon if you wanted to put like a marshmallow filling or, you know, a ganache filling on the inside that could cut into it as an actual dessert. Um, mm -hmm. Just gives you some really, really yummy options as well. And of course, you can flavor the ice malt. So if you wanted to um, really correlate with this bright red, you could put a really yummy like a cherry flavor. You could do a cinnamon flavor into it if you wanted to, a peppermint, or you can you know do whatever flavor that you like. You can make this raspberry, or you can make it strawberry. Um, anything that you like, you can mix in oil-based flavorings. Um, at the same point that I would mix in color, I just stir it in when it's melted, and you can flavor these. So if you are gonna make this some, something that someone's gonna eat, it really does give you a lot of options. Laura thinks, or no, she says they usually have them in the bridal section. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah, that's real. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> like at Michaels and things. I would think right now with like Christmas villages, that yes. that would be very popular. Definitely, definitely. Okay, good, good tips. I like it. All right, I'm gonna um, tilt the camera up because I want to show you guys two hanging it. So, um, hello again. Let me get this up here. So I have my little hanger that I usually use. I have my sparkly ones still on here. Okay, but I'll take that off. Uh, right now so that I can put the other one on probably gonna get sparkles all over me yep <laughs> um, but I have my pretty ornament so this doesn't have any support or anything in it um, it's just solid ice malt but because it is all ice malt and it's hollow so it's not too heavy it should be able to support itself as long as you torched really well to attach that hook on and you have your beautiful hanging ornament so this is just like a mini hanger um, that's usually used for ornaments like at Christmas time or you can use them for little plants and things like that and um, I think we got these on Amazon yeah I'm pretty sure they were really inexpensive yeah um, I think it's like a pack of them for maybe 10 bucks or 15 bucks yeah. really not too expensive and it just makes like a really nice cake topper I think the base is about five or six inches so I use these a lot on um, like especially double barrel cakes and things that are very tall it just gives you a really really pretty finished look I think it would be beautiful to serve your desserts that way at everybody's setting. Oh yeah, that would be really With pretty. The chocolate ones especially. The chocolate ones especially, and instead of the bow, you could put like a little monogram, or you could put like a little letter for everybody's initial, or something like that would be really fun too, or a family initial. That would be super fun. Put it over there. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think of the ornaments? What do you think of the air casting? Can you see lots and lots of different ways to change this technique up? Um, I have another picture that I wanted to show you guys too of another air casted piece. This one's a little bit different because I have a couple different ways that you can air cast. This is um, basically just blowing into molds and it takes the form, but I also have one um, and it uses a specific type of mold to actually do free form air casted pieces. So you can get textures and shapes into pieces, but also still have the um, flexibility to be able to shape them. Um, so I wanted to show you a piece that I did with that. This is a fairly new piece. Here, um, this is going to be my project for the scene retreat our sugar splash retreat that we are holding here in Melbourne Florida in uh, May of next year so you can see that this is blown ice melt to um, the tail and the uh, fins and things those are all air casted so you see how they have a lot more life and movement that way uh, with the advanced air casting techniques. So this is kind of the one that I showed you guys is more of the basic, like simpler techniques, but um, you do have the more advanced techniques, uh, which is actually gonna be hand sculpting them, which is gonna be so much fun. Um, this is a brand new class. So if you're coming to the Simi Retreat, um, we are going to be doing this first there. And I'm really, really excited about this class because we're gonna do some airbrushing. Um, we're gonna do the hand sculpting, making the fins and everything. So it's gonna be a blast. And speaking of the Simi Retreat, um, we have just launched tickets for it. So you may have seen a couple days ago we put out the tickets and all the info for our see me retreat and we are blown away to um, by the reaction to this and really excited to say that there are only limited spaces left um, we only have a few more seats left for the all access pass so the all access is for the two days the two full days of the retreat it's here in Melbourne Florida on May 3rd and 4th of 2022 um, and it's gonna be so much fun um, the, the venue that we're holding it out at, at the hotel is right on the beach we're literally like 20 steps away from 
the ocean where our classrooms are. And we're going to have the amazing uh, Chef Nicholas Lodge um, from Atlanta. We're going to have Don Butler all the way from the UK teaching. I'm going to be having my blown um, fish class. And we're also going to have the incredible cookie artist Dosha Freeman from Sweet Trade Bakery, um, who is local here to Melbourne, Florida. She is going to be teaching some cookie demonstrations as well. So um, it's going to be so much fun. And we do only have limited spaces available. Now, if you are a Florida local um, and um, you want to just come for the demo night too. We're also on Wednesday the 4th having a demo night with even more special guests coming over from all over Florida. So definitely check that out. All the ticket info is available on my website. You'll see a tab at the top for the Sugar Splash Retreat. And um, there are only limited spaces available left for the all-access ticket, which gets you everything, all the classes. So these are going to be um, full hands-on classes. They're going to be demos. We're going to have um, bingo night. We're going to have ice cream social. We're going to have the demo night, um, Dosha's demo. We're going to have dinner. It's going to be the entire event so I'm so excited for that um, and for everybody who has signed up so far we're gonna have such a blast but make sure you do snag your seat soon because we only have a limited amount left all right. And like I was talking about before, we have our um, demo coming up here on the Simi Cakes page. The next one is going to be this Tuesday, December 14th. Look how absolutely beautiful this cake is that Mariana Beltran created. Um, she uses the Simi Color Splash colors to paint. So just like I used that white to hand paint, um, she's going to be showing you guys how she does this amazing, amazing um, technique of hand painting directly onto the cakes. So I'm really excited for her to share that with you guys. It'll be just like this for free um, here on the Simi Cakes page at 6 p.m. so it's an evening demo after work um, come and join us on Tuesday because Mariana is going to be showing us some really really amazing stuff um, that she does because she makes those absolutely incredible elegant wedding cakes um, so yeah I'm really excited to show you guys that and I also have another live demo this Sunday but this one is going to be with Dinky Doodle so Don Butler who we we're just talking about who's going to be teaching at the retreat I'm going to be doing a live demo for her this Sunday um, for her day of Christmas demo she is doing an entire day of Christmas Christmas themed demos. You can sign up on her website. You do have to sign up in order to attend, but um, she gave me a discount code for you guys that I've just posted on my page. So if you go to my page um, or you can message me if you can't find it, there's a special link that you can use for 10 pounds off of the entry and you get this entire day of demos. So these are the demos I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing some shaker lollipops um, turned into ornaments, um, showing you guys the melted snowman, um, using flex forms, a just a whole bunch of holiday Christmas themed things to do with your ice malt and your molds. But she's going to be doing like five hours of demos before I come on at about 2 p.m. EST um, or 7 p.m. UK. Um, but she's going to be doing five hours of demos. She's doing like this really awesome gravity-defying stocking. She's going to be showing you guys chocolate, sculpted cake, airbrushing, tons of stuff. So you don't want to miss that. It is this Sunday, and um, it is UK time, but if it is early for you, uh, all of the videos and the demo, the live demos are available to rewatch over and over for everyone afterwards. So it's going to be a really, really fun event this Sunday. What is the price of that? Um, I believe it is 35 pounds, but you get the 10 pounds off. Um, yeah, so that is in pounds, so just translate it to uh, dollars. But you do get the 10 pounds off using our exclusive code for you guys. All right, and then my uh, next Zoom class, because I know a lot of you guys uh, take my Zoom classes every month, uh, is going to be our Roaring 2020s uh, piece. So the Martini glass is one of our brand new molds that we just came out with, um, the three inch one. So it's a nice small cake topper size. We also have the margarita glass that's that size too that just came out, but I'm going to be using the martini glass, showing you guys how to make this gravity-defying piece that's perfect for New Year's. Um, we are going to be doing it between the week of Christmas and New Year's on the 29th, uh, and it is a Zoom class, so you do have to sign up, um, but you get that super interactive environment where we get to work alongside each other. We're going to be making these um, gravity-defying pieces. I'm going to show you how to make the um, silhouette of the girl. We're going to be doing some really um, unique stenciling techniques onto the base and how to make those um, splashes out of coming up and out of the um, martini glass with the really, really um, fluid movement. And uh, we're using the clear glitter for that as well, which I'm really excited about because that's another one of our new colors. Sharon says she can't come this year, but she hopes you'll have one in 2023. Yay! Yes, hopefully we will. And hopefully we will see you there. All right. Come back to me now. All right. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this demo. Was there any other questions that I have um, while you guys, while I'm here? Let me know. If you're watching the replay of this, please feel free to write me personally out here on my Facebook page. You can send me an email, send me an Instagram message. I'm always happy to help with any questions that you guys have. But um, yeah, just let me know if you have any questions about this. Evelyn says she got her kit and the mold is awesome. Yay! Make sure to post your pictures. Remember, um, everybody who's in the See Me Torch team or if you're not in the See Me 
PyTorch team, make sure to join because it's a super fun online Facebook group. Um, we make it just, we have so much fun in there. We do yeah. game nights, we do like challenges and competitions. Everybody posts their pieces that they make um, along with these accessory kits and um, classes. So it's really fun to be able to see each other's work. So if you are a member of the Torch team or if you're not, make sure to join, but definitely post your pictures so everybody can see your pieces because it's fun because everybody has their own interpretation of it too, doing their different colors or different design ideas. It's just really, really fun. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I will see you guys on my demo on Sunday. Um, and yeah, I'm just super excited. Do we have any other comments I want to get back to? Did you see any? So. All right. Okay, good. I just want to make sure because sometimes my comments jumble up. Okay, awesome. Well, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everybody. And I will see you on Sunday if you're going to be joining me for Dawn's demo. And we'll see you this Tuesday for Mariana's live demo right here on the Scene Cakes page. Thanks, guys. Merry Christmas. Bye, everybody. Bye.